Okay, I'm going to go over some of the stuff that we need to remember about using SketchUp for schools. If you want to get SketchUp for schools, you go into your drive account and uh, create your folder for skill start or whichever course you're running. And then um, in that folder, go to new and then go down to your options, slide right down to the bottom, click SketchUp for schools. Now, when SketchUp for schools loads and you log in with Google, the first thing you need to do is remember that it's an American program and its default units are going to be inches. It's an imperial system. So what you need to do is you need to click on 0, 0.0 mm to put it into millimeters and then work to a certain level of accuracy. Well, my precision on this one uh, is a millimeter, so zero, right? Okay, so so uh, that's my my tens rather than tenths or hundredths. Okay, so once that's done, you can close that window off there. And we're going to start off with a fairly simple make, which is a bench hook. Now, I, I showed you in class, like some of the other things that I've I've drawn that you can make as as useful woodworking tools. You know, you got two different kinds of shooting block, and then you've got this dowel maker that you can use with a with a plane, right? We'll start off with something more simple. Now you're familiar with the bench hook and how it works. So we're going to try and draw a bench hook out, okay? So bench hook is basically three cuboids, but you've got one uh, large cuboid and two identical. So you actually only need to draw two cuboids out. So let's start off, okay? We're going to start off by drawing a rectangle. So you go to the rectangle button and you're going to draw a rectangle. You drag the rectangle out. Make sure it's a flat rectangle like this. Now don't click the mouse, just drag the rectangle out and you're going to put some numbers in. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to type in 250. You'll see the numbers coming up in the dimensions bar at the bottom and then put a comma. So that's the length and comma for the width, which is 150. So click enter and that is your base size. Right, and it's a 2D object at the moment, so it's got a length and a width. Let's make it into a 3D object by giving it some depth. So I'm going to go to my push-pull button, I'm going to grab that surface and I'm going to pull it up and we're going to go up 20 millimeters. So there's my base piece. Right, next job I'm going to do now is I'm going to lasso that base piece, right click on it, and I'm going to make it into a group. Okay, making something into a group is a good way of being able to add parts to it, but not get them so they're part of the actual original group. If you do want to change that piece though, you do either have to double click on it to edit it, or right click on it and go edit group or by here, which is the same thing, right? Double click to get out of the group. Okay, let's draw the uh, end stop, this piece here. So it's 20 millimeters uh, wide, 20 millimeters high, and it's 120 millimeters long. So I'm gonna go back to my rectangle button, click on a corner, pull this way. Now you can see the numbers changing in the box there. So what I need to do is I need to type in one, two, zero millimeters, comma, 20. Always put the comma in, so that's the length and the width. So hit enter. That gives you your rectangle for the end stop. Now that's a 2D shape. We want to make a 3D shape. So let's go over here and pull that up 20 millimeters, enter. So that now is a separate shape. So you can see that and this one here, but this one's not grouped yet, okay? So I'm going to lasso this one, right click on it and make that into a group. So I've got a group and I've got another group. Okay, so what we do with bench hook, like if you're right-handed and you cut using the saw in your right hand, you use the bench hook this way around. That either goes over the edge of the bench or in a vise, and you cut on this side. So you hold this part here, and you saw here. If you're left-handed and you want to use a bench hook, you flip it over, look, and you can put your right hand on the job here and cut with your left hand. So uh, this is the way we're going to kind of lay out the, the blocks, okay? So here we go. I am now not going to draw another piece under here. I'm just going to reuse this piece here. So here I go, a simple technique, right? Select the thing you want to move, go to your move button down here, select move, and here's the important bit, okay? You have to go on the control button, press control once and let it go, and then choose a point on your rectangle that you want to use as a reference point. So I'm going to click on the top corner there, look, and here comes my copy, and now I need to do is show it the place where I need that to go to. So show it the bottom corner of the first cuboid, and then click to drop it there. Okay, well, all's well. That's my bench hook, right? Now, pretty quick job to do, but let's add a little bit more complexity to it, right? So if I grab this piece here, look, I'm going to go to move, and you will see now that I have considered how this piece is going to be joined together. I'm going to use some dowels. So these are 30 mil long, 8 mil diameter dowels. So we're going to put those in there, right? So to do these, let's have a look what we need to do. 
So we're going to select the object that we want to move, first of all. So we're going to move this piece on the end here, so select it, go to your Move button, click on a corner and drag straight up. You'll see it'll tell you that it's on the blue axis like that, which is good. OK, so let's do a bit of editing groups. Double click because we want to check, drill. First of all, we want to drill holes in the, the big cuboid by here. Right. Measuring. If you back down here, look, you'll see a tape measure tool. So hook your tape measure over and measure 10 millimeters. Type in 10, enter in that direction. Hook it over the edge and measure this way, 30 millimeters. From the line you've just drawn, measure 60 millimeters. Enter. Okay, so you've now got the centers for two holes that you're going to drill. Go back down to your shapes menu and pick up a circle and then look for the little red cross and the message that says intersection. Click, drag out and type in four. It's asking you for the radius of the dowel. So four is the radius of the dowel. Click four. OK, so click to get out of that. Now, do not jump out of the shape, OK, because you're in a group now, remember. So make sure you stay in the group like that. And now we're going to push those two circular holes down into the material. Now, if you hover over the corner here, you can drill a hole that goes all the way through. But we don't want that. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo that a second. Control Z. And I'm going to just pull down until I type a number in, which is 15. Remember, they're 30 mil dowels. Do the same on this one. Type in 15. And I've now drilled two blind holes so blind holes don't go all the way through remember okay so that's my base piece double click to get out of it everything else will come back into view sorry it's doing an auto save at the moment so it goes, suddenly goes slow when it's auto saving back to life in a second there we are saving okay so that's my uh, piece i now need to draw in the towels so here we go Hover over here, wait until you see that red cross, and then draw yourself a rectangle. Okay, I'll show you a little trick here. If you hold the shift button down as you come close to that little cross, it'll keep the circle constrained to being flat to the object, okay? So I bring it over there, and I want to make sure that when I draw my circle, I draw it on the center of that shape, which is not playing ball at the moment. OK, we'll draw it in a different way. We'll just draw off the job and we'll bring it in afterwards. So I'm going to draw a circle for diameter and I'm going to pull that circle up 30, which is going to be my dowel. 30 millimeters. There's my dowel. That's it. Right click on it, make it into a group. Now what I can do is I can pick it up by a corner and I can bring it over to the corner of my job. Then I can lift it. Oops, Daisy, not that one. I can lift it straight up, look, to create the dowel that's going to join my pieces together. If I want to move that one, remember, go to your move to repeat it. Press the control button once. Click the copy, drop it in the place where you want to put it, and then lift it straight up to create your exploded drawing. So all you'd have to do now, really, to finish the drawing off is to draw the holes that are put into the top section. And you would be uh, having your finished Sawhorse. Oh dear, look, when I moved this piece down, I've also rearranged this piece. I've got to drop that back down to the corner. So that is drawing a bench hook using SketchUp for Schools. If you don't want to see your guidelines, a couple of things you can do. Click on the glasses, turn the guides off, which is quite handy. Or if you want to delete the guides, then you can double click on the sketch where the guides were made, pick up your rubber and just delete the guides. So they disappear like that. Make sure you double click to get back out your sketch. Oh, got one more to do up there. Look. Click on that one and delete that one up there. And back out to my sketch. So there is my sawhorse. So if you've drawn that successfully, you've learned quite a few uh, good techniques that you can apply to other drawings as well. OK, go over it again if you are stuck, uh, just to make sure it's um, all made sense. You can pause and rewatch the video if you need to.